Hello, my grade 8 students. This is Teacher John. And for today's session, we will be analyzing a poem. But before we formally start our discussion, we will play a game. I'm pretty sure that most of you are already familiar with this game. This game is called Guess the Jumbled Bird. Now the mechanics is very simple. I will present jumbled letters and you will have to guess the word through the clue above it. You will be given 10 seconds to guess each word. Are you guys ready? Very good. So let's start. Now the first word is a country. Your 10 seconds starts now. Time is up. So class, what is the word? Very good. The word is Africa. So let's proceed to the second word. The second word is a prolonged cruel or unjust treatment or control. Your 10 seconds starts now. Time is up. So what's the word glass? Very good. The word is oppression. Now let's proceed to the next word. The next word is a condition in which one human being was owned by another. What's the word glass? Your 10 seconds starts now. Time is up. What's the word? Very good glass. The word is slavery. Now let's proceed to the last word. The last word is a request made in an argu in an urgent and emotional manner. What's the word? Your 10 seconds starts now. Time is up. What's the word class? Very good. The word is plea. So wow, that was amazing class. You really did a great job. So for that, now we will be answering some questions. So we have here three questions that we need to answer. Let's start with the first question. So the question is, what are the words we got from the game? So we have Africa, we have oppression, we have slavery, we have plea. Now the second question is, what do you think is the relationship of these words to Africa? Anyone? Very good. Now the relationship of those words are actually the experiences of Africa or African people to be specific. Based in history, Africa experienced oppression, slavery, and discrimination from the white people because of their skin color and economic status. In fact, class, they have been traded from one superior to another. And that is so inhumane and that is so sad, class. Now let's proceed to the third question. How would you know the history culture of Africa and experiences of its people? Anybody who would like to answer? Yes? Very good. So, we would know the history, culture, of or experiences of Africa through reading and viewing their literary pieces. And that's the beauty of literature class. Now, in Africa, most of the experiences have been, have been embedded on their literature. And that's how rich Africa in terms of their literary pieces. Now speaking of literary pieces of Africa, now we will be analyzing one of its literary pieces. The title of this poem is Africa's Plea by Roland Tombikai Dempster. So I will read to you the poem. So the poem is 
I am not you, but you will not. Give me a chance, will not let me be me. If I were you, but you know I am not you, yet you will not let me be me. You meddle, interfere in my affairs as if they were yours and you were me. You're unfair, unwise, foolish to think that I can be you, talk, act, and think like you. God made me me. He made you you. For God's sake, let me be me. So that was the poem Africa's Plea class. So now before we proceed to the analysis, uh, we will answer first these questions. The first question, what is your initial interpretation of the poem class? Anyone? Very good. It talks about how the oppressors um, influence the lives of Africans. No? Very good. Now, who do you think is the persona of the poem? Yes, anyone? Very good. Now, the persona is the poem can be the author of the poem as being the representative or being the voice of the Africans or it can be the Africa or the Africans to be specific. So now, to whom did the persona address the poem? Very good. The persona addresses the poem to the oppressors, to the colonizers of their country, specifically the white people. So now, to um, understand deeply the poem, let's proceed to the analysis and we will be doing that by stanza. So let's analyze. So for the first and second stanza, I am not you, but she will not. Give me a chance, will not let me be me. If I were you, but you know I am not you, yet you will not let me be me. So what does the first and second stanza talk about? Very good. In the first and second stanza, the persona is pleading the invaders or the oppressors to give him the chance to let him be him. The line, let me be me, that keeps on repeating, shows a strong desire to be free. Now let's proceed to the third stanza. So the third stanza, you middle interfere in my affairs as if they were yours and you were me. So what does the third stanza talk about? In the third stanza class, the persona shows how these colonizers, oppressors, or invaders influence them, such as meddling and interfering their actions and way of life which is supposed to be at peace. Now for the fourth stanza. The fourth stanza. You are unfair, unwise, foolish to think that I can be you. Talk act and think like you so what does the fourth stanza talk about so in the fourth stanza the persona describes the invaders as unfair and wise and foolish of having influenced the way they think talk and act so this means that the colonizers the oppressors or the invaders have influenced how africans think how africans talk and how Africans act. Now for the last stanza. So this is the fifth stanza, the last stanza. God made me me. He made you you. For God's sake, let me be me. So what does the fifth stanza talk about? So in the last stanza, the persona is giving a difference of how God created them. Africans and they the inv invaders should not interfere with their lives the persona ended the poem pleading to let him be him to let Africans be the Africans for God's sake 
So the question is, what is the meaning of the poem? Anyone? Alright, therefore, the poem talks how invaders negatively influence Africans' life. That's why they plead to give them freedom, rather, to be themselves and be responsible for their own actions or affairs that is free from meddling and interfer interfering from others. So I hope you have understood the poem, you have analyzed the poem, no? So let's proceed to your homework. So in your, um, your homework, answer page 189 in your book under Think It Over with three bullet questions inside the box. There is a box there named, um, uh, named Think It Over and you will have to answer those questions and please label it with homework 3.1. That ends my discussion for today. I hope you learned something. And I end this, um, this discussion by saying, keep fueling the fire of learning. Thank you and God bless.